Hi everyone, Kevin here. Today we are going to take a look at the top 12 new features in Microsoft Teams. Microsoft has been investing substantially in Microsoft Teams. With all this remote work, it makes sense. It's one of their highest priority products. Luckily for you, that means there's a ton of new stuff to check out. In the description, you can click on timestamps if you wanna to jump to a certain portion of the video. Otherwise, let's jump on the PC and let's see what's new. The first new feature is noise suppression. And what is noise suppression? Well, let's imagine that you have a dog barking in the background, a baby crying, or maybe you're eating some popcorn and it makes a lot of disrupting sound for all of your other attendees in the meeting. With noise suppression, you can very easily eliminate all of those sounds. So how do we turn on noise suppression? Well, in Microsoft Teams, let's go up to our profile picture in the top right hand corner and click on that. Within the menu, let's go down to settings. Within settings, click on devices. Within device settings, there is now a new option here for noise suppression. And by default, it's set to auto. So what this means is that Teams will determine the best level of noise suppression. There's also the option of high. With high, this suppresses all background sound that isn't speech. And this will also require the highest level of system resources. So if your computer's already struggling with Microsoft Teams, I don't recommend setting it to high. There's also the low option, and this will suppress low levels of persistent background noise. So what this means is, well, let's say you have a computer fan that's pretty loud, or maybe you have an air conditioner, maybe even a vacuum cleaner, this will eliminate those noises. Also, if you wanna play, let's say music in the background, I also recommend using low. Down at the very bottom, if you don't wanna use any noise suppression at all, let's say that you're in a room that's acoustically treated, turn this on and you'll get the most pristine and highest quality level of audio. Here I am now in a meeting with Nestor, and I don't know about you, but anytime I join a Microsoft Teams meeting, I just get really hungry. So I've got to pull out the popcorn and let's see what's going to happen in this meeting today. Unfortunately for Nestor though, he's not going to enjoy any of this popcorn and he has to deal with the sound the whole time. Right now I have my noise suppression turned off. Okay, so that's actually pretty rude of me. I don't wanna to have to disrupt everyone. So I now have noise suppression turned on high. And check this out. You don't hear any of that sound. It only lets my voice go through. How cool is that? New feature number two, you can very easily transfer a meeting between your phone and your PC, so no one in your meeting will have any idea that you just switched devices. Here I am on my phone, and it looks like right now there's a fun meeting going on, so let's click on join. I just joined this meeting, and let's say I'm making some coffee at home, or maybe I'm finishing up my breakfast, and then I make my way to my PC. Ideally, I'd like to switch over to my PC now and have the full screen experience. When I jump over on my PC in Microsoft Teams now, I see a banner on top that says, you're in the fun meeting. Thanks, I know, it's a pretty fun meeting. Want to join on this one? Yes, I wanna switch over to my desktop, so I'll simply click on join right here. When I click join the meeting, I get two different options. I could join on both devices, so I could have my phone and my PC active at the same time, or I could transfer to this device. Let me click on transfer. Once I join the meeting, here you'll see on my phone, it now tells me that my meeting was transferred and I'm now active on my desktop. Nestor has no idea that I just switched from my phone to my PC. The third new feature, you can now use Microsoft Teams for personal use. If you love it at work or maybe at school, you can now use it at home. Previously, you could only use the mobile app and the web app for consumer use. What do I mean by that? Well, maybe you have an at outlook.com email account. You can now use Microsoft Teams. You can use it to plan get togethers or maybe to organize your soccer schedule. You get all the power of Microsoft Teams. You can use things like together mode, screenshot, sharing and there's no time limit, so you don't have to resort to 45 minute Zoom sessions. Unless of course you are using the 45 minute limit as an excuse for cutting short family time. Over here on the left hand side, I could view all of my personal activity. You can kick off chats. I also have a calendar and this is all synced with your Outlook calendar and you get apps, but the apps experience is a little barren today. You only get the help app and that's it. So hopefully more is coming soon. The best way to think of this is this is like a very much improved version of Skype. And best of all, it's entirely free to use. 
features. New feature number four, with the addition of personal accounts in Microsoft Teams, the desktop app, you can now switch between work accounts and also personal accounts. So here I could switch between multiple different account types and you could even add additional accounts. In the past, you had to sign out and then sign back in. Especially if you had a number of accounts, it was a massive pain jumping between all of your accounts. So it's nice to see that this experience is now improved. New feature number five, you can now conduct polls during Teams meetings. This way you can get immediate feedback while a meeting is going on. When you're in the meeting details in Microsoft Teams, to be able to conduct a poll, click on the plus icon on the top bar. This opens up a prompt and then click into Microsoft Forms. Click on Add, then click on Save, and lastly, click on New Poll. You can then create your very own poll with your question and then different options. And I finally got smart about my question about what's your favorite cookie company, I simply put down only the Kevin cookie company so you can't select any options. Here you could select whether you allow multiple options and you could set various settings related to your poll. Let's click on save. Next, I see all of the polls that are associated with this meeting. I could launch it right now or I could launch it once I'm in the Teams meeting. Let's go ahead and join the meeting and see what the experience looks like. I'm now in the Microsoft Teams meeting and I have a new button on the top bar for polls. When I click into this, this opens up a pane over on the right hand side where I can see all the polls I created. Once I'm ready to launch the poll, I can click on launch. Once the poll is live, I can see that it's live and then I can click on results and I can see the results results immediately. And what did you expect? Of course, the Kevin Cookie Company is the best company, and it looks like each of these options got 100% of the votes. New feature number six, you can now pin a post in Microsoft Teams. Within this Teams channel, I just posted our website to the team to look at, and I wanna make sure anyone else who joins this team sees this post. To pin the message, I simply hover over, and then I click on the ellipses. Within this menu, there's now a new option called pin. Let's click on this. This opens up a prompt asking me if I wanna pin the message. Let's click on pin. The message is now pinned and you see a green pin mark next to the message. To view all of the pinned messages, let's go to the top right hand corner and there's an info icon for the channel up here. Let's click on that. This opens up information about the channel, including things like all of the members and the activity. And right here, I can see all of the pinned posts. So this is a good place that users can go to reference whatever you have pinned. To remove a pinned post, well, you do it the same way you added the pinned post originally. You simply hover over, click on the ellipses, and then you can unpin, and that'll remove it from the pinned section. New feature number seven, you now have more control over what your status says. Let's go to the top right-hand corner and click on our profile picture. Within here, there's the option to set your current status. When we click on this, we have all of the different standard settings like available, busy, do not disturb, and there's a new one now. You can set yourself to appear offline. So here I'm still in Microsoft Teams, I'm still working, but no one can see that I'm currently online. So maybe I wanna take a break, maybe I don't want people pinging me, I can set my state to offline. Along with being able to change my status, I can also set the duration of the status. When I click on this, I can set what I want my status to be. So maybe I have a very important project I'm trying to get done, I can set myself to appear offline, and I could have it take effect for today, maybe just a few hours, hours or this week. Now I really need to get some work done today, so I'll set it to today and then click on done. Once the day is up, it'll reset my status again. New feature number eight, you now have a lot more control over your notifications in Microsoft Teams. The experience has been cleaned up dramatically. Now, if you use Microsoft Teams and you have a lot of team members and a lot of channels that you're part of, you probably know that notifications can get out of hand. Luckily, Teams has now cleaned up this experience. Once again, let's go to the profile picture in the top right hand corner and then let's click on settings. Within settings, over on the left-hand side, let's click into notifications. You'll notice now that the notifications experience is much improved, and you pretty much have full control over what notifications come through. New feature number nine, you can now mute attendees and your attendees cannot unmute themselves. So if you want them to be quiet, you can keep them quiet. To be able to take advantage, well, first off, you have to be the meeting organizer. Click into the meeting details and there's an option on top called meeting options. Click into that. 
Within meeting options, at the very bottom of the page, there's a setting called allow attendees to unmute. Currently it's set to yes, meaning that if I mute someone, well, they can then unmute themselves. If I toggle it to no, this means that if I mute people, they stay on mute. One other setting that we should look at is right above. It says who can present, and by default, everyone's a presenter. And if you're a presenter, this setting down below doesn't apply to you. So to make everyone an attendee, you need to click on this list. Currently, it's set to everyone as a presenter, but if I only want me, let's say the organizer to be the presenter, I can set it to only me. And what this means is everyone else is then an attendee. If I want to give other people presentation control or I want to allow them to mute and unmute, I could also set it to specific people. For now, I'm going to set it to only me. Within the meeting itself, let's say I forgot to set this setting, I could also set it while a meeting is in progress. I could click on participants on the top bar and then there's an ellipsis here with more actions. I can set it to not allow attendees to unmute. Let me turn this on for this current meeting. Once I set that setting next to Nestor, I see this icon now indicating that he's unable to unmute. Let's go to Nestor and see if he can talk. Here I am now in Nestor's view and if we look at his meeting controls on the bottom, here I see that the mic is disabled and no matter how many times Nestor tries to click on this, he won't be able to talk. So in a sense, I've silenced Nestor. New feature number 10 is insights, and this is specific to educators. Over on the left-hand side of my education account, I have a new feature here called insights. Let's click into this. This opens up a dashboard where I can see all of the activity across my class. For example, I could see how many of my students have been active. Here, I've only had one student active, so it's not a very active class. I could also see by hour of the day when people have been engaging. Up above, I could filter down for the types of activities that I wanna look at and I could also specify how many days back I wanna look. On the dashboard here, this gives overall statistics, but as a teacher, you can also dig in and see how much each individual student participated. Let's click on the tab that says reports. Within reports, this gives me a little bit of information about what the report will show me, but why don't we go ahead and we could simply export a report. Here I could choose the date range, I'll simply look at the last week, and then click export to CSV. This exports a CSV where I can see all types of information about all of the students in my class to see what their participation was. Let me adjust the view to make it easier to read. Here now we could see examples of the information captured. It'll show me the date, the student name and also the email address. And then here I could see how much time they spent in meetings, how much time they spent on assignments in communications and Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and I could see how they were engaging. So as a teacher, I could, in a sense, use this as an attendance tracker to make sure that my students are actively participating in a class. And I know all students, I'm sorry for sharing this information. You'll probably hate me for this, but hopefully we can make good in the future. New feature number 11, you can now use templates when creating new teams. In the bottom left hand corner, let's go ahead and click on create a team. This opens up a screen and once again, let's click on create team. This opens up a prompt where I could start a new team from scratch and so I'll just be able to create everything on my own. I could also create it from an existing team. So maybe I've already structured a class or another team the way I want it and I simply wanna reuse it for another group. I could start from that. And down below, I see a whole bunch of templates that are catered to my industry. So this greatly simplifies creating a new team. Let's click on one of these to see what it does. I clicked on manage a project and here you'll see that it automatically adds four different channels, including general announcements, resources, and planning. And then it also adds a set of default apps. So I don't have to manually go through and configure all the different channels and all the different apps. I could simply use a template and it'll automate this whole process for me. New feature number 12, and this is perhaps the most fun one. You can use emojis in team names and also channel names. Let's test this out. I'm gonna go over to one of my teams here and let's add a new channel. For this channel name, I wanna call this, this is lit. Now, of course, it wouldn't be lit just like that, so I'm gonna click on my emoji key, and then I'll insert the fire. Now it's truly lit, and let's go ahead and add this channel. Check that out. I now have an emoji appearing alongside my channel, so your channels can stand out much more this way. All right, well, that was a quick look at what's new in Microsoft Teams. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. To see more videos like this in the future, hit that subscribe button. If you wanna see me cover any other topics on this channel, leave a comment down below. All right, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you next time. Bye.